no conditional talks, says Qadir, on U.S. proposals. Everything will be settled on the street, says Fakhrul. Gaza crisis deepens. Those were the headlines. This is 18 News. Good evening, viewers. I'm Salim Kadir with English News Bulletin. U.S. pre-polls observers have given five advices for participatory and fair polls. Besides, they have also advised to ensure freedom of speech and ending political violence. International Republican Institute, IRI, and National Democratic Institute, NDI, have revealed on their websites today the five advices of the U.S. pre-polls advisers to ensure a smooth polls in Bangladesh. Pre-polls observer delegation from U.S. came to Bangladesh on October 7. IRI and NDI jointly conducted pre-polls survey in the country from October 8 to 11, financed by U.S. The U.S. team held meeting with political parties and several stakeholders. The advices they made are tolerable statements and dialogue between political parties on polls-related issue, freedom of speech during polls, pledge for non-violent activities, accountability of the people responsible for violence, ensuring environment for fruitful competition of all political parties, and creating a culture among the citizens to take part in participatory polls. Think about dialogue only if BNP withdraws condition. Minister for Road, Transport and Bridges, Obaidul Qadir made the remark while replying to a question at a briefing at the Secretariat on Sunday. When asked about the fruitful dialogue among the political parties to hold participatory and violence-free national polls, as suggested by the U.S. pre-polls observers, the Awami League General Secretary said if BNP set conditions for dialogue, then Awami League have no intention for such talks. European Union will send an expert group on a small scale to monitor the next parliamentary polls in Bangladesh. Awami League President Member Mohammad Farooq Khan made the disclosure after a meeting with UE EU delegation at EU Ambassador to Bangladesh Charles Whitley's residence on Sunday. The meeting that began from 11.30 a.m. continued for one and a half hour. EU Ambassador and representatives from 10 EU countries were present at the meeting. Farooq Khan held the Awami League delegation. Farooq Khan said the EU wanted to know about Awami League's stance regarding the next polls and what had been done for fair polls. The Awami League leader claimed nothing has been discussed about BNP or an issue related to dialogue. Awami League will not be allowed to do same type of polls like that of previous times. BNP Secretary General Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alamgir made the remark at a meeting in the capital on Sunday afternoon. Criticizing the remark of Awami League General Secretary Obaidul Qadir, Mirza Fakhrul said, Western world believe in democracy. The BNP leader said, BNP believe Awami League will not be successful this time to hold polls like that of 2014 and 2018. The Western powers will support BNP's movement for proper election atmosphere. The conflict in Gaza taking a worsening turn, causing severe humanitarian crisis. The death toll continues to rise. Noman Mahmoud Rahman brings you more. The conflict in Gaza has taken a horrifying turn, with besieged people in Gaza are running out of food, water and shelter as Israel continues its airstrike in Gaza. The death toll from both the sites now crossed more than 3,000. More than 10,000 people are hurt. Israel is taking fresh preparations for all-out attack through air, sea and ground against Hamas. Since the attack of Hamas on October 7, Israel has destroyed 1,300 buildings in Gaza through air strike. The whole Gaza is besieged by Israel, pushing the unarmed innocent civilians into a helpless situation. 
Medical services in Gaza on the verge of collapse due to lack of equipment to cope up with the situation. Without relief aid, it will be difficult to survive. That is why many agencies have called for creating safe passage. An aircraft has reached Egypt with medical aid from World Health Organization. U.S. President Joe Biden has talked to Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and Israeli President Benjamin Netanyahu on telephone. Meanwhile, Russia has called for voting on the draft resolution at UN Security Council to end conflict in Gaza. Demonstration continues across the world in favor of Palestine. Numan Mahmoudur Rahman, Desk Report, 18 News. U.S. has deployed second aircraft carrier strike group to deter hostile actions against Israel. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said in a statement on Saturday, Pentagon has ordered a second carrier strike group to the eastern Mediterranean Sea. Besides, it is also sending Air Force fighter jets to the region as Israel prepares to expand its Gaza offensive. Earlier, the first carrier strike group, led by the U.S.'s Gerald Air Force, arrived off the coast of Israel last week amid the ongoing conflict. Austin added that U.S. warships are not intended to join the fighting in Gaza or take part in Israel's operations. The presence of two of the Navy's most powerful vessels is designed to send a message of deterrence to Iran and Iranian proxies in the region. The movements are part of our effort to foil any efforts toward widening this war following Hamas's attack on Israel. We now begin with news on ICC Men's World Cup. Afghanistan. Australia will face Sri Lanka on Monday in an important match of the World Cup. Both teams will go to Ikana Sports City Stadium in Lucknow in search of opening the points book. The match will start at 2.30 p.m. Bangladesh time. Australia has a record of 34 consecutive wins in World Cup. They have so far played two matches in World Cup and yet to register any win. The batting lineup failed in both the matches against India and South Africa. Warner Smiths are yet to give the best. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka started World Cup with two consecutive defeats. They played without several important players due to multiple injury problems. Injury has forced keeper Dasun Shanaka out of the World Cup. Kushal Mendes will lead Sri Lanka in the remaining World Cup matches. Australia has won eight matches against Lankans in 11 encounters in the World Cup, while the Lankans have belted two wins. It is a must-win situation for both to stay in the World Cup. We now follow up with a short break and we will be back soon with Maksud Kamal, new Vice-Chancellor of Dhaka University. Chris Lokshan, new Prime Minister of New Zealand. You're watching 18 News. This is Salim Kadir with English Bulletin. Deputy Vice Chancellor Professor Maksud Kamal has been appointed as a new Vice Chancellor of Dhaka University. The Chancellor of the University, President Mohammad Shahbuddin, has appointed him as a VC. The Education Ministry has issued a circular in this regard. Professor Maksud Kamal will replace incumbent VC Mohammad Akhtar Zaman. Professor Maksud Kamal has been discharging the responsibility of Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Dhaka University since June 2020. He is a Professor of Disaster Science and Climate Resilience. Professor Maksud Kamal has been appointed as a visiting Professor of University College, London of UK, till 2027. He is an expert on earthquake, tsunami and urban disaster management. Sixty-five of his scientific writings have been published in foreign journals.
We now begin with news from around the world. The opposition national party's Chris Luxon has won the New Zealand election. He is the next prime minister of the country. The party has taken enough seats to form a coalition with its allies on the right wing of politics. Incumbent Prime Minister Chris Hipkins of Labour phoned National's leader Chris Luxon to concede defeat. Luxon thanked national voters and said they had reached for hope and voted for change. It marks a rapid elevation for Luxon, who became an MP in 2020 and national leader only a year later. Luxon's election campaign promised low taxes on middle income citizens, alongside crime suppression was also emphasized. Official results are not available yet. National was projected to win 50 seats with around 39% of the vote. Labour was projected to win 33 seats. The Greens 13, Act 12, NZ First 8 and Tea Party Moria 4. Around 96% of votes have been counted. Afghanistan has hit by third earthquake several days after two large tremors in Herat city of the region. 6.3 magnitude quakes struck the western Afghanistan. No immediate casualties were reported. U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, said the magnitude 6.3 quake struck near the Herat city. The depth was 6.3 km. USGS said the epicenter of the latest tremor was 30 km northwest of Herat, Afghanistan's third largest city, close to Iranian border. Last Saturday's earthquake hit Zingdanjian district some 40 km from Herat. UN's children agency UNICEF said over 90% of those who died in earlier quakes were women and children. Houses were too fragile to withstand quake and tremor reduced those to rubble. Afghanistan is frequently hit by earthquakes, especially in Hindu Kush mountain range as it lies near junction of the Eurasian and Indian tectonic plates. We now begin with sports news. Before ending the bulletin, the top story is once again. No conditional talks, says Carter, on US proposals. Everything will be settled on the street, says Fakrul. Gaza crisis deepens. Maksud Kamal, new vice chancellor of Dhaka University. Chris Luxon, new prime minister of New Zealand. That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for being with us. Until then, see you soon.